Siege peasy. This suave looking young lad's name is Leo, and I must say he bears a striking resemblance to his dear uncle, CG Peasy. Leo is now in university and is becoming an inspiring young artiste. So one fine day he came to me and said, Dear most gentlemanly and lordly uncle, I seem to be at a quandary, for I have all this beautiful artwork to show the good people of St Edmundsbury, but alas, nowhere to display them. Well I said, you're in luck my young lad. It's time for you to dabble in the world of 3D animation. First, we need to get you to look at some gallery pictures online, and you choose the parts that you like. He said, I like this room and this roof, these windows, and these walls that stand up and display the paintings. Brilliant! All you need to do is... Take the default cube and stretch it the size you want your room to be, then delete both ends of the cube. And then you want to create a loop cut in the center of the roof where you want your pitch to be, and then lift it upwards until you get it to the right height. I put the pitch slightly off center for design purposes. Now add some more loop cuts to the roof where you want your large window to be. Then select the face you made for the roof window and extrude it up just a little bit. Then delete the face that you extruded, select all the lines around the window, and extrude this one outwards a little bit. Now let's try and make the windows at the back of the room from the gallery on the picture. So add a plane and fit it to the size of the wall. Press Ctrl R to get the loop cut, scroll up with the mouse wheel to get the amount of cuts you want, then left click to confirm selection. Then lift the vertices one by one to close the wall. In face select mode, select all the faces where the windows are going to be. Then press I twice to inset the faces against the individuals, and extrude them out just a little bit. Ok, now if we come to the inside of the room, on face select mode, select all the faces that make up the frame of the window. Click on the first one, then hold shift and click on the rest so you can select all of them. Then press E again to extrude the frame just a tiny bit, and select all the window panes and delete them too. And it's finally starting to begin to look like a room. I'll give it a little bit of a stretch and a squeeze, just to get it to the size I want. And now we need to add a cube and give it a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of a squeeze, and then put it up onto the roof where we want to put the beams for the roof windows. Once we get it to the correct angle, we will then duplicate it a few times, move it across the roof at the same angle, and create a bunch of windows. I'm pretty happy with that amount, so let's make another box. This box is going to be one of them little self-standing walls you saw in one of the other gallery pictures. Once you have stretched it and squeezed it to the shape you want, proceed to place your wall wherever you desire. I'm going to rotate mine a little bit, and then I'm going to duplicate it and stick another one next to it, at the opposite angle. Now it's time to add in an HDRI for the lighting. You click on the shading tab at the top, change it from object to world, then add in an environment texture. You can find these HDRIs on a nice little website called polyhaven.com. Then attach the environment texture to the little dot that says color on the background node. And I'm very happy with that. Okay, let's take one more look at our scene and see what we can do. I'll probably play around with the lighting a little bit, and now it's time to texture the scene. Ok, before we start any texturing we're going to have to do a few things. First let's go back to the shading tab and change it from world back to object. Now we need to add a little add-on called the node wrangler. So go edit, preferences, type in node in the search bar, tick the little square box, then click the three lines in the bottom left corner and save preferences. And once you've done that, it's time to get some textures from a fantastic website called AmbientCG.com. Once you're on there, just click on Materials, then choose the texture you want, click on it, and down below you will find all the download files and the different sizes that you can download. Once it's downloaded, place that folder in your project folder, then proceed to extract the files. You should then see all the pictures come up that are going to create your PBR texture setup. Click on the mesh for your room and name the material. Click on the principal BSDF, press Ctrl Shift T, find and select all your textures and click principal texture set. And when we look at it, we can see the texture is a little bit too dark. So what I'm going to do is add a tiny node in called mix RGB. If you place it between the top texture and the principal BSDF, make the second color white, change it from mix to lighten, then put the factor up to one. Okay, so as you can see, the texture is a little bit stretched. So what we have to do is click on the mesh, press Ctrl A and apply the scale. This basically tells the mesh that it's the shape that it now is, 
and not the cube that it was before. OK, now select the room and go to UV editing. Press A to select all the faces. On the left hand side are all the faces you've just selected that your texture will go on. Now the scale applied has not worked yet until we click on Smart UV Project. And once we do the UV projection you can see that all the shapes are the correct size. So this time on the left hand side of the screen press A to select all and S to scale. The larger you scale the smaller the texture will be on the wall. But do not worry the texture is tileable so you will not see any recognisable seams. Back in layout mode the textures still seem too bumpy. So go back to shading mode and delete the displacement node. And that fixes the problem. And now comes the arduous task of redoing exactly the same process for all the other objects in the room. So we'll start off with the little fake walls that we put up to display the artwork. Go into UV editing and unwrap it. Then go back to the shading tab and select your texture for the wall. Repeat the process with the other wall and then it's time to do the back windows. For the windows basically select the whole thing and make the colour close to black. Now in edit mode select the two sides of the window that are going to be part of the wall and in the materials tab on the right hand side click on the plus icon to add a second material and in the drop down material select wall again. Click assign and the wall texture should be applied. OK now it's once again a repetitive process of making the beams. Find yourself a wood texture and apply it to the wooden beams as you applied it to the rest of the meshes. I would recommend duplicating this beam and deleting the other ones underneath. OK let's take a nice little step back and have a look at the room. Yes it's looking pretty good I'm liking that. Beam's looking nice. So now we just need to add a floor. For this I'm going to add another plane. Stretch it out to the size you want it and lift it just above the level of the floor. Then add the texture to the floor using the same process as you did with the walls and the beams. If you want the wood to go a different way you can rotate the texture on UV editing mode. There's one more thing I want to add that I forgot to do earlier. So what you want to do is add a cylinder to the centre of the room, add another tiny thin cylinder above, then click on the add menu and select text, type in the name of the artiste, select the text tab on the right hand side, then you can centre the text and under geometry you can add extrusion. Then you want to shrink it down and add it over the top of the smaller cylinder. Add a material to the text, uh, make it metallic maybe. Then select the smaller cylinder and delete the principal BSDF and in place add a glass BSDF. The nice thing about the glass BSDF is that you don't really need to do a lot of work to make it look good. It just automatically sits on there and kind of does its job. So to finish it off all you need to do is rotate the text and the small cylinder and give the large cylinder the wall texture. It's finally time to add your beautiful artwork to the scene. First of all we're going to add another add-on. The add-on is called Images as Planes, add it the same way as the one before. So go to Layout Mode, select Add, Images and Images as Planes. Go to the folder where you saved all your artwork and select one of the pieces. Then go down to the bottom right hand corner and click on Import Image as Plane. Then scale the image to the size you want it, rotate it so it fits on one of the walls and then press E to extrude to give it a little bit of depth. Then do the same process with the rest of your artwork until you're happy with your scene. And once you're happy it's time to start animating your cameras in your scene. OK we've well got to the right angle where you want to start your scene. Press Ctrl, Alt and 0 on the numpad to project the camera from view. The camera view is the square on the scene. And you can make further small adjustments to the camera in the transform panel. When your camera is in place press the I key and select location and rotation. This should add a keyframe to the camera. Then move your viewport to where you want the camera to end. Move to around frame 100 on the timeline below. Then press Ctrl Alt 0 again to project the camera from view. Then press the I key again to add another location and rotation keyframe to the camera. And if you go back to the beginning of your timeline and press the play button you should hopefully see a nice smooth panning shot of your scene. But before you do anything else make sure your render engine is on cycles and you have your max samples down to around 200. If you're happy with that then go over to the output tab, click on the folder to choose your file name and location and just above make sure your scene starts on frame 1 and ends at frame 100 and then choose the file format you wish to output your video on. And when that is all sorted go to the top of your screen under the tab that says render and click render animation. 